You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cricket Podcast for our IPL weekend reaction and wrap-up show. Um, we've got Dhoni. Dhoni back in action. He's back. It's amazing. And CSK lose by absolutely miles, but Dhoni's back, and that's the main <laughs> thing. We also had Gujarat wrapping up a pretty comfortable win over the Sunrisers Hyderabad earlier on today. And the Lucknow Supergiants getting off the mark against the Kings of Comedy in Saturday's match. I'm Jack Ope. I'm joined by Ross Legg. How are you doing, Ross? I'm good, thanks, mate. And um, yes, uh, what an honour for the cricketing community to um, get to see Dhoni in full flow. Um, you see him take down a um, what is world class South African bowler when there's absolutely zero pressure on him, um, which is great to see. <laughs> I think that's quite harsh. I mean, like I, he, he played pretty well. Like, it's not, it's not actually Dhoni's fault that um, they lost this match by. 20 runs and were never really in it. He did his he did his level best. 37 or 16. You can't knock that. Um perhaps he should have batted earlier. I don't know. We'll get into that at some point in the podcast. I think we'll do the games sort of in reverse order of, of how they happen. So we'll do Chennai first. We'll do Gujarat's win second, and then we'll talk about Punjab last. Before we get into all of that, uh, just a reminder that you should be liking and subscribing to the Cricket Podcast, whatever platform you're listening on. And if you want more from us um, and Slash or you want to support the podcast directly, why don't you sign up to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the cricket pod. Uh, you can find the link in the show notes if you can't be bothered to play that back and listen. Um, and from just four pound a month, you can you can help keep us in business. Ross, I'm going to give you the task of Max today. Um, can mm. you give us a quick summary of what happened between Delhi and Chennai? I thought you were going to ask me to sing an Ed Sheeran song for a second. Um, but we are... <laughs> uh, Pritvi Shaw was back, Jack. That's the, that's the big news. Pritvi Shaw was back in um, the... And let's be fair, he's bloody good at cricket, I'm pretty sure. Um, and he and Dave Warner got Delhi Capitals off to pretty much the perfect start. And that kind of just continued for me. It was the first time we'd really seen kind of, I don't know, just a, a quite a complete performance from Delhi. Um, and here they had, yeah, pretty sure going a bit nuts up top. Dave Warner rolling back the years. Rishabh Pant then comes in and smashes a load. Um, and it kind of fizzles out kind of towards the end. But ultimately, 191 on that pitch was always going to be really difficult for Chennai to t- chase down. Um, and they kind of their bowling unit was a bit disappointing, if I'm perfectly honest. They kind of looked a little bit like they were out of ideas. Um, and it was one of the first times I've seen this Chennai team this season not actually shuffle the deck a little bit more. Um, and I thought, actually, they could have changed one or two people in their lineup today. Um, and then batting-wise, Khalil Ahmed, out of nowhere, cleans up um, Gaikwad and Ravindra early on. Um, and then a slight boring fight back from Rahane and Mitchell. Um, but CSK's innings was so dull. Like, it was probably, I, I, like, today has been two major dull, dull events. Arsenal versus Man City, unbelievably dull football game. And whilst that was going on the other side of the world, CSK were absolutely stinking the place out with what was an absolutely abject back performance, if I'm perfectly honest, from them. Um, but that was only because Delhi, I thought, actually had a game plan. You saw it today. They were trying to keep to hide the ball outside off stump. They were actually good in the field. And it was a much more complete performance here. Um, and what is a, I don't know, um, a much more varied bowling attack on quite a quite a difficult pitch, actually came up trumps for them. Um, and yeah, Chennai Super Kings were not good enough on this occasion. And if I'm perfectly honest, the 20 run deficit um, actually should have been much larger if it wasn't thanks to some late, late over hitting. Yeah, it could have been, could have been a lot worse without Dhoni doing what he did at the end there. Uh, I kind of agree with a lot of that, Ross. I mean, I, 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 first of all, I was quite surprised with how well Delhi played. They've, they've not been good in the first two matches. They've obviously made some pretty big strategic blunders. Then there was news that Kaldeep Yadav, who on paper is probably their best, maybe their second best bowler after Nokia. Um, and, you know, Nokia's had his own issues in this tournament. So you know, that's a completely different topic. He He's ruled out. And you think the Chennai, who were favourites anyway to win this match, um, are even bigger favourites but if you if you didn't know what had come before you would think it was the other way around that Delhi mm. were the really sort of competent team that had played two matches and had really clear role definition and Chennai Super Kings were the kind of team in disarray who didn't know who their best players were and had people in the wrong place in the batting order and stuff like that um, and I guess Ross it shows that 
in the IPL, even the worst team, and I'd probably still be tempted to call Delhi the worst team, that despite... <laughs> I mean, know, RCB, you've got a lot to say about that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> And Punjab, but we haven't we haven't got to them yet. But Delhi, they're not. You know, they're not. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have them as a, even a mediocre team. I'd say they were somewhat near the bottom, probably. Maybe they're not the worst mm. team. Maybe that is a bit harsh. And I would have Chennai somewhere near the top. I think they're a pretty good team. But it shows that it doesn't take much in a, in a league that is built effectively for parity to see the tables turned quite significantly on on the on the guys that should have been the favourite. Does it? No, and there's, there is some talent in this Delhi team, right? But we, I think we've said in our preview shows that things have to go rewrite for their better players. And then all of their kind of lesser players, and they don't have the strongest contingent, I don't think, um, have to make sure that they are outperforming their kind of skill set. And today, you just saw that. It all kind of came together for them. And I thought that it was actually one of those pieces where um, Delhi could have had a really difficult time. Um, they were playing, what, 1,500 kilometres away? And I think this is a this is technically a home game for Delhi. Is that right, I think? Um, my brain's telling me that. Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, you are Ch- right. Chennai is just around the corner of Vizag, really, um, in comparative for the, the travel. In, in Indian so, terms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and it was pretty much a CSK home game. You saw the sea of yellow that was there. And it, was, it could have been really easy for them to kind of get um, intimidated. And you just saw today that actually when you've got big name players and Richard Pan is, yeah, it doesn't come any bigger, I don't think, as it was one of those players. So um, it was yeah, quite nice to see because, yeah, Delhi had been um, almost preserving a place in Delhi's infamous toilet museum um, with their performances thus far. Um, and it's nice to see them come out of it. And Jack, let me be, let me, let's be really fair. I think that as much as their batting was impressive, I thought their bowling was spot on here. They even mm. had a sacrifice over for Mitchell Marsh, which is nice to see. That's a real, that's a charity giving, bloodletting type thing going on there. Um, but fair play to Khalil Ahmed um, and Mukesh Kumar in particular, who bowled particularly well. Yeah, I think I think the bowling deserves loads of credit, and and the seamers who I think most people had identified as a weakness for Delhi deserve most of that credit. Um, they. They bowled exceptionally well. Khalil getting um, Gaikwad early is great. And, and he had Ratchet Ravindra absolutely on toast. I mean, this is a guy who had lit up the IPL. I think he had 85 runs in 59 balls or 49 balls going into this match. And um, now he has, I think it was 83 runs. Now he has 85 runs. He managed to get two off 12 balls uh, and, and literally was missing the ball by a foot. Like he, mm. he was completely lit up by Khalil Ahmed. You'll barely ever see a player in T20 cricket um, done over as badly by a bowler as Khalil Ahmed did there. It was terrific skill, wasn't it, from the left armour? Yeah, and I think it goes to show that as, as, you know, anyone on their day can be useful. And the ball was actually moving around. And as we've seen in some games this year, the ball was actually yeah, done a bit. And other games, it's done absolutely nothing. And tonight, um, it, it was in the favour of Delhi. And I thought they did yeah, yeah, really, really quite well. Um, what was interesting to see was CSK's approach to batting. Um, I found it a little bit confusing, if I'm perfectly honest. Like, losing a couple of early wickets and then having the take-it-deep strategy that's become in, like, synonymous with CSK, you can see kind of it was always going to be a bit of a slower rebuild. It was always going to get there. But <clears throat> if I'm perfectly honest, it didn't need some of it. Like Daryl Mitchell um, absolutely stunk the place out. He was he was pretty dreadful, if I'm perfectly honest. It wasn't, didn't provide the impetus that it needed in the middle overs and was really struggling. Um, and then um, there was a couple of yeah, decent deliveries. Obviously, Do gets out. Rizvi, who uh, smashed Rashid, Rashid Khan for six first ball the other night, went first ball. Um, and then the beta cuck that is <laughs> Ravindra Jadeja um, literally comes in ahead of King Dhoni. And you're just like, what, what was going on? Like, in the last four overs, five overs, when they were batting together, they were like just ones and twos. That'll be fine. That's absolutely fine. It's almost like they thought there was another over or two left. And you saw um, <laughs> Dhoni turning down singles to Jadeja. Like, I've never seen like, like an evisceration of someone's like masculinity more than Dhoni has done that to Jadeja. Like, it is absolutely ridiculous in the sporting sense. Um, and yet it gets down to, oh, we need 45 or 47 off the last over. I'm going to take Nokia for 13 and over or whatever it was. And it was just, yeah, bizarre, 20. the approach. Yeah. Um, no, look, Donnie looked good. Um, he looked really good. And, and the hair suits him. The muscles suit him. Um, I hope I hope we get another year. I hope CSK spend another 15 crore on retaining and make him captain again. That's what I say. But, but um, perhaps, you said at the top of the show, like, if he's going to do that, bring him in earlier. 
Like the guy literally could he could see the ball, right? He literally was smashing around Norky, who's the Delhi's fastest bowler. Like, just go go and get go and go on, see you later, go and pinch it, Dodi. He didn't need to be be left in the hutch if they were going to treat Jadeja like that, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, just want to give a couple of shout outs to people from the YouTube chat who have sent us in some super chats. Uh, Adve Nagel says, me seeing CSK struggle, me satisfied, and <laughs> AN0989 says, keep up the great work, boys, which we will aim to do. We will aim to keep the work great. Um, Ross, we've talked a lot about the Chennai innings there. Mm. Uh, we haven't mentioned much about what Delhi did right with the bat. I mean, like they've been pretty listless, pretty boring to watch. Um, not a team that you thought could put together a big total, really, in this tournament. Uh, and then they make a change. They bring Pritby Shaw in, who you know, he's, he's got a little bit of a checkered record, we might say, over the last uh, couple of years, both on and off the pitch, both on and off the pitch. He comes back in 43 off 27 for him. It seems to reinvigorate David Warner as well, who's exciting and scores lots of runs. We see Richard Pant being able to bat with a little bit of time. It's not super fast. You know, twenty nine of twenty six at one point, I think, and then he he, you know, flicks a switch. He's hitting sixes. It looks like old Rishabh Pant is back. He gets fifty one off thirty two balls, and you start to think, oh, maybe, maybe there is something in this Delhi team. Maybe they are the team that you know, maybe the promise that they have, in theory, provided to us with that batting and how they could exploit a power play could, could be something we see over the rest of this tournament or Ross, do you think it might just be a flash in the pan? Give me your thoughts. Um, I thought pretty sure coming in was, um, yeah, a nice change. Like he is definitely one of those people who yeah, is, um, what's the word in, in certain circles, he'd be revered in other circles. He would not be revered. Um, is how I'm going to put that one. Controversial. Um, is that the word yeah. you're looking for? Yeah. He's a controversial character. Yeah. Both. Um, yeah. Both in the alleged opinions. Sense. Yeah, yeah, and the maybe literal sense. Who knows? Um, but when it comes to when it comes to his batting talent, like that is unquestionable. I think. I think, and what you saw was actually two very difficult people to bowl to. Um, and I thought actually that combo up front of Warner and Shaw is difficult for the bowlers. And um, Pant coming in after that, I thought was a nice touch as well. Mitch Marsh sometimes up top, kind of. I think he started off reasonably well, but hasn't kicked on. And here they set up a pretty good foundation um, to kind of build from. Um, what I did find a little bit surprising was, and I know we're trying to talk about Delhi, but um, what I found surprising was Chennai Super Kings set up here. Like looking at the pitch, actually this could have been something that someone like Moeen Ali would have been actually a little bit more effective on rather than Daryl Mitchell. And I just felt they left themselves a little bit short on the bowling option front. Um, don't get me wrong, Desh Pandey ends up with their best bowling figures pretty much um, after the uh, Paterana. But you know, a little bit just like that, it, it just felt a little bit listless from them. And sometimes you do get this with Chennai. Um, sometimes you, they, they seem like a quite a ruthless, like sometimes boring team that kind of go through and win and win and win. But sometimes you do get very flat games like this. And Delhi were up for it. Delhi were about to turn into a bit of a life, laughing stock for the IPL um, if they would have lost here. Um, and would have been well in contention, and they still are, for the wooden spoon. But here, Richard Pant had a point to prove, and I thought he galvanised his troops actually really quite nicely. Um, and they were yeah, somewhat unfortunate um, not to get a bigger score, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, so, yeah, fair play to um, Shaw coming back in and David Warner um, doing particularly well. And it's great to see, like I cannot underestimate, understate this, it's great to see Richard Pant back. Yeah, it, def it definitely was. I mean, that's, for me, really the big story of the game. And we haven't spoken about him that much, but Richard Pant getting his first 50 after the horror accident and after looking a bit scratchy in the first two games and doing it in kind of style once he got going as well, I thought was um, was top. Ross, does it change your opinion of either of these teams? Uh, no, I, I still think Delhi are not going to get near the playoffs, if I'm perfectly honest. And I think that, you know, that there was a quite a lot of overperformance, it, it felt like today, especially on the bowling front. Um, and I think other teams... Uh, they will just be able to kind of react a little bit more. Um, it kind of felt to me that this Chennai team were a little bit arrogant going into this game, and they kind of thought it was a bit of a foregone, uh, foregone conclusion and a complacency kind of set in. So, um, yeah, a deserved victory for Delhi, but I'm not sure this is the start of a renaissance kind of 10-game winning streak. Cool. Right, we're going to take a quick break. Then we're going to come back and we'll be talking about Gujarat Titans v. the Sunrisers Hyderabad. <laughs> You're listening to the Cricket Podcast.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Cricket Podcast, where we're talking about the IPL action from this weekend. Uh, we're about to move on to Gujarat Titans, who ground down the Sunrisers Hyderabad in the early game today. But before we do, I just want to give a shout out to our friends and sponsors for this episode, Manscaped. Um, you can head over to manscaped.com and use the code CRICKETPOD for 20% off plus free shipping. It's spring cleaning, Ross. And spring cleaning doesn't just apply to the nether regions either. You can get the full grooming experience with Manscaped's signature Beard Edger Pro kit plus handyman electric face shaver. That's good, isn't it? That's yeah, I think both, both of us could do with one if I'm perfectly honest. You've got kind of a bit of a five o'clock shadow going on. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I'm, 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 it's a bank holiday weekend in England. So we've had Friday off, we've got tomorrow off. So um, the razor's put away. But um, I think I'll be breaking out the old Manscaped gear tomorrow. Yeah, uh, whether you're looking to craft your signature look or clean up the neckline, as Ross was talking about there, these are always the right tools for the job. So remember, you head over to manscaped.com, use the code CRICKETPOD for 20% off plus free shipping. Once more, 20% off plus free shipping with the code CRICKETPOD at manscaped.com. Um, Ross, Gujarat Titans, I can talk you through this one if you like. Gujarat mm. Titans played Sunrisers, Hyderabad. Um, this morning at the the Modi Dome, it's the first the first game in Ahmedabad and the Ahmedabad Bad Boys. Um, I think I think took a leaf out of Dan Weston's book here. So Dan on our Friday show said, in a, in neutral conditions, he'd quite fancy the Sunrisers, but he thought that Gujarat would roll out a really slow pitch that benefited their spinners. Um, they made a change to the team before the match. They sent Spencer Johnson out, Noor Ahmed in. And um, we got the pitch that Dan predicted, I think it's fair to say. Um, Sunrisers never properly got going. I mean, it was sort of like a group effort to get them up to 162. No no proper standout players in there. You know, maybe Abdul Samad 29 or 14 is a decent knock, but um, not a lot to talk about. Uh, Mohit Sharma looked pretty handy with the ball with his sort of top spinners and bag of tricks stuff uh his his last season renaissance looks like it's it's something that that will continue into this year and Rashid Khan and Noor Ahmed um sort of did enough to tie people down that neither of them really took the game away necessarily from Sunrisers but they were both not easy to get away and both picked up a wicket each um in response Gujarat um sort of did a professional job like it, it wasn't sexy it wasn't super thrilling uh Riddham and Saha got them off to a nice start Gill and Sysa Darson knocked the ball around for a while. And then Dave Miller, there were a few fireworks. There was a little bit of killer Miller in town, but nothing mm. like mind blowing. Uh, they chased it with five overs, five overs. Fucking hell. That wasn't, it wasn't that good. Um, <laughs> they chased it with five balls to spare. Ross, what were your main takeaways from this game? Uh, I'm going to correct you. I get, rarely get to correct you. This is the second oh, okay. game at the, Modi, at the Modi Dome. There's, oh, uh, is it? Hardik Pandya's return. How could you oh, forget course, that? Only, only yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, I, 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 I was. It was one of, again one of those days where it kind of felt like a bit of a procession. Like Gujarat Titans showed that they have the pedigree, and I think um, you nailed it when you said they've got eleven good cricketers. They typically put out eleven good cricketers on the ground, and you're not too worried about it. Um, here, they actually sacrificed one. Um, I was very surprised to see um, now Kande in the lineup. I thought that Sai Kishore had actually been doing a pretty good job for them, mm. and I think rolling out kind of the slow and low deck actually would have benefited playing Sai Kishore. So it was a little bit weird kind of how they manage him. But overall, this was, yeah, it was quite a routine victory. Um, and Sunrisers Hyderabad have been brought back down to earth quite quickly after their um, record-breaking timeout last time. Um, Jack, I think in terms of the overall performances, um, it was, again, a, a decent performance from Gujarat with the ball. Well, they show they've got that flexibility. Um, I'm not convinced by Omazai as kind of the Mohamed Shami replacement. I think if they want to make progress and they want to kind of go, is he really the person you want bowling your power play overs? Um, he's doing an okay job, don't get me wrong, but the threat of what they did last year uh, was something quite different. And this was the first time we'd kind of started to see actually a bit of a shift in their game management. I think actually we said that before the tournament, they used to kind of blow people away in the power play with Shami, with it, with the other bowlers. Um, and now what was their best approach using Rashid Khan, using Noor Ahmed, using Sai Kishore, using those spinners to kind of suffocate. Um, and it was a clear strategy here. And um, yeah, they did yeah quite nicely, I thought. Yeah. I mean, like it, it was one of those games. 
sometimes the IPL throws out some incredible stuff. And, and we got a lot of that. First weekend, four of the best games you could hope to see. Then we had the 500 run madness midweek. This is like the, the you know, the pause for breath. The palate cleanser. Done. It's the palate yeah, cleanser. This, is, this was a brilliant, brilliant course and you just need a little little sorbet. Yeah, it was. and, and, and this, But it's also one of those games where I think you do learn about who might be able to get eight wins. And I think there's kind of a suspicion with Sunrisers that when it bangs, they're going to be amazing. Like their ceiling, as we saw on Wednesday, is off the charts. Like it's 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 we've never seen stuff like this before. Areas um, when it doesn't bang, there's basically no plan B whatsoever. Like they just lose. Like it was it was it was it was. I think what did you say? Routine. It yeah. was just routine. Gujarat turned up and they were like, "Yeah, there's eleven of us, and as long as Heinrich Klaassen doesn't go ballistic, we'll probably win." Uh, and he didn't, and then they won and i know that's kind of boring analysis and in a sense i'm doing the alan shearer here and i'm just describing what happened but bigger picture i think this shows us ross that that gujarat are a potential contender here and sunrisers are probably going to struggle to win seven more matches in the 11 that they've got to go yeah and i think what you saw is when you are able to limit a team to 160, actually it gives your team just a freedom to do whatever it wants, right? It's kind of the King Legend wet dream, almost, this innings, right? When you're chasing kind of 160, you get the opportunity to take the risk out of the game. And side to Harshan, um, you're kind of sitting there um, kind of going, well, actually, 45 of 36 balls. We'd normally be absolutely chastising that. But Sunrisers just kind of let it happen. And the guy takes away a big chunk of the runs and actually people can kind of bat around Starson and it's just, yeah, a procession in the end. Um, and there yeah. was no real risk to it. Um, and, yeah, when they've got people like David Miller, uh, Tawati and Rashid Khan still in the hut, like, like still to come in, right, and cause a bit of damage, it was just all, all a bit too meek for them. Um, and, Jack, this was on the back of some pretty... Poor news for Sunrisers today, right? Hasarang has been ruled out. Oh, yeah. Um, and they've got to be sitting there going, right, we, we need a better spinner. Like um, Washington Sundar, your impact sub, is it's just it's the most underwhelming impact sub you're going to have. It's, it's literally just, he's just a substitute. He's not an impact substitute. He's just a substitute. Um, and Mark Ande is like, he's okay. But he's not he's not going to put fear into anybody. So um, they might want to try and give themselves an option. Um, and my other thing for some risers is Markram. Um, Markram is fine. Again, he's, he's, he's like that. But I want to see Glenn Phillips play. That is what I want to see. I want, I want to see like Markram's had three games. He's done fine, but he's not really lit the thing up. Um, he was obviously captain last year. That's been taken away from him. Um, he's had his opportunity to go, nope, oh, you were wrong to do that. Pat Cummins, come on, this is, needs to keep me in the team. I think it's time to see a bit of Glenn Phillips. I'd like to see a bit of Glenn Phillips as well. The one thing that Hasaranga being injured does do is it means that Cummins is probably in the best 11 regardless and it takes a bit pressure off the whole captaincy situation. And we were quite critical of that. So um, that's that's one of the narratives for this team that we'll probably have to let go and you know, they'll get away with it. Um, just on the on the, the Gujarat Titans front, um, you mentioned Omazai is a sort of a very pound land replacement for Mohamed Shami. One of the things he does do is bat, though. Um, mm -hmm. And and you can throw him into the list of players. I think you mentioned Tawatia and Rashid Khan. They also had Omazai to come. Umar Shadav is, is not a complete plank with bat in hand. Um, when you see Gujarat, I mean, they've, they've absolutely cruised to victory here. They, they probably didn't need to make it as close as, as it actually was in the end. They could probably have, have played for net run rate. But it's early in the tournament, so they've just banked the win. And I, I think that's kind of fair enough too. When you when you think that they still have another, maybe, maybe not completely frontline batter in Omazai and maybe not a completely frontline batter in Tawatia, but guys who are big contributors in the right circumstance and they've got Rashid Khan to come in, it, you do see that they could <laughs> you know, they could be a real handful for teams. And um, well played Gujarat, I think. Yeah, I think that's probably fair, right? I, th I think there is that part of when you're trying to trying to replace Shabby, it's impossible to do so, right? Mm -hmm. So actually, they're, they're yeah. kind of going, you know what, we're going in a different direction here. And I think you're right, Omazai, like if you can get three overs out of him, 
and he goes for less than kind of nine and over, you're probably coming out of that and going, you know what, he might have picked up a wicket here or there like he's done in a couple of the other games. And actually, you've just got, you know what, he's got really clear role definition. We're only going to do it in this kind of situation. And actually, it's maybe it's, 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 it's well-managed risk is how I'd like to see that. Um, but it's just, a, it's just a little bit dull. Um, but actually, sometimes a nice little game plan is the way forward. So, yeah, good rat Titans rack up a uh, another win. Um, and I think they've, they've started off reasonably well after kind of losing Hardik Pandya, right? They're, they're kind of two wins from uh, the first three games. And, yeah, some risers are going to be that roller coaster to, to follow this whole way through. Um, but ultimately, Super Sunday was um, a bit of a damp squib today. It was, yeah. Should we move on to the next game? Um, mm. And then we should have time to do a little preview of the the, the rest of the matches. I just want to say on, on, on Dhoni, and I don't think we really covered this like properly, so just as a little interlude. How weird was it that people were going absolutely... Like, the, the stadium was full of Chennai fans. I, I've looked up the distance. It's about 800 kilometres, so not exactly around the corner. <laughs> there wasn't people that are headed down from Chennai. I think we could make the assumption that they live in Vizag. Um how weird was it though that everyone was going ballistic for the guy when the team had lost really comprehensively? Yeah, it was. I it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's literally is that. Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. And, and to be fair, um, they've seen CSK win so often. They're actually just like, you know what? Um, the IPL was in the UAE which during COVID. Um, they maybe not have got to see kind of Dhoni play. Dhoni, this is the first time he was batting this season as well, all of those fans are sitting there going, do you know what, he's the most successful India captain of all time, he's Dhoni, right? I've got to see him in full throttle and I've got to see him put on a bit of a show. And sometimes the IPL is more entertainment than sport, right? We've, we've compared it to kind of wrestling before, <laughs> run WWE and SmackDown. Um, and he's like The Rock, right? <laughs> in this kind of Stone Cold Steve Austin. And uh, people have gone, do you know what? I've got to see him do it. Um, so I can kind of I can kind of get, okay. I, I get my head around it. Um, doesn't mean I condone it, but I can get my head around kind of what you've done. The other thing we've not mentioned, Jack, is KP's insight on commentary. Um, oh, no, for, for, for Henry behind Clarkson around because he's taken up golf, he means he's better at hitting sixes. <laughs> it wasn't even that. KP, he didn't even know whether Clarkson had taken up golf. He just assumed <laughs> that Clarkson had taken up golf, and that's why he'd gone from like quite a handy T20 player to the best T20 player in the world. Um, because in KP's words, he's now using different muscles to hit the ball further like a drive and you'd only pick that up from golf. Um, like, I'm not saying that biomechanically he's completely wrong. Like, sometimes Heinrich Klaassen does look like he's hitting a golf ball, but it was a, a, a really bizarre interlude in commentary um, from a guy who clearly done no research. Again. Well, um, well no, 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 the commentary has been dreadful this entire tournament. Absolutely dreadful. Um, um, it's, in the last year, they barely yeah. even mentioned Cold Deep wasn't playing. Like, or why? <laughs> it's like, yeah, we got the best. We got the best like... Indian wrist spinner in the tournament, um, and he's out with a slight niggle. Um, but do you know what? Let's just not mention him at all. Yeah, like you're just like, okay, fine. Right, um, right, Ross. Yeah. We want to move on. We want to move on so we get the show uh, wrapped up. I'm, I'm going to play the. We'll do a quick break and then we'll come back um, cool. in ten seconds and talk about the final game. You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Cricket Podcast, a part three of our IPL weekend wrap-up show. We're going to be talking about yesterday's games. This is the match from Saturday, Saturday between Lucknow Super Giants and the Punjab Kings. Before we do, a reminder to click like and subscribe. I'm going to I keep saying it, and it must be quite boring for some of you to keep hearing it, but two-thirds of people aren't clicking that button, Ross, and um, you know that's a problem for our business model, which is to take over cricket media uh, and ultimately cricket. Um, you know, we we want to eventually, Ross, drop the podcast bit from the whole name, just become the cricket and uh, <laughs> run the whole show. So, the first step to doing that is you is you clicking subscribe or follow wherever you're listening or watching. Do you want to summarise yesterday, or do you want me to do it? Um, I'll, I'll do, I'll do a quick one run through. Go on. 
Yeah, I thought that um, Lucknow and Punjab was going to be it was going to be a, a very interesting game. You've got a team that is quite disciplined in how they're going about it, and you've got a complete and utter lottery in the Comedy Kings. Um, and what you saw here was um, a bit of bit of balance, um, and you saw quite a ruthless performance, I thought, from uh, Lucknow with the bat. Um, the cock um, went a, li a little bit a little bit crazy up top. Um, King Legend decided to try and utilise the power play, um, and unfortunately lost his wicket. Um, he wasn't captain in this game. Nicholas Puran had the opportunity to do that um, as Kale's workload was being managed um, and Puran got them up to a, a pretty good score with uh, Krunal Pandya showing um, kind of how it's going to work. Um, and then I thought that <laughs> overall, um, yeah, 199 um, at the Akana Stadium was, was a decent, decent score um, and it was going to be very difficult for Panjab. But Panjab had performed okay. I thought they did okay with the ball. They took wickets. They kind of were getting into good positions. Their fielding still a little bit questionable, as as it always seems to be. Um, and then Johnny Bester and Shikhar Dawan out of the blocks were yeah like getting them there. They were kind of up with the run rate. Um, they were doing a decent job. Um, and then again, like um, Snake Boy Singh um, out of Dan's Dream was doing okay, but then the, it just all slowed down. And actually, the the whole pressure kind of got to them. And I thought that. Punjab did an awful lot right in this game, but it just wasn't enough against um, quite a clinical um, Lucknow, who yeah walk away with yeah a much needed victory, um, and yeah they had a secret weapon jacked, didn't they? In Mayank Yadav, who has turned up and he's decided <coughs> I'm going to bowl 100 miles an hour, and that to <laughs> any team in the IPL is going to be a, a surprise. So um, fair bloody play. Yeah, that was. Um... I mean, it was a real bolt from the blue. There's, there's a lot of weirdness happened in this match. Punjab played pretty good cricket and then made some of the dumbest mistakes you'll see a professional cricket team make in terms of bowler choices. I mean, there was the, the one that leaps out to me. They had the whole thing under control and then they bowled Rahul Chahar to... Uh, who is, I mean, like a pretty bang average spinner, to be honest, in over recent years anyway. They bowled him to Nicholas Puran a left-handed spin hitter, and maybe the best left-handed spin hitter in the world, who, who just launched him for, I think it was four boundaries in a row, could have been three boundaries in a row. And all of the good stuff they'd done was immediately undone. And it was like, you didn't you didn't have to bowl that guy. Like, that, you didn't have to do that. Um, letting, letting, letting luck now score 199 at this stadium is, is in, impressive. And then with the bat, I mean, like they get to their hundred, and it, it does slow down a little bit. But they were up, they were up to a hundred, pretty much in ten overs, and, mm. and then, and then they're like, in the game. They're in the game. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a look at the odds at this point, so I was like, "This is you know ten wickets in hand." They, I think they needed a you know a hundred of nine overs. I was thinking, "This is this most teams are going to win from here." I had a look at the odds because it's always interesting when Punjab are playing to see what the the algorithms make of the situation and, and Punjab were like three to one. They were miles off the pace. It was like any other competent team in this league, they're at least 50, 50 from this scenario. <laughs> and Punjab, it was like, no, nah, 25% chance at best. They hadn't lost a wicket. I mean, it was like, what's going on? They had two set batters. Um, Kings of comedy. They're just, the, they are, they are just the Kings of comedy. Um, and I think if you look at, yeah. on, on the bowling front, Jack, like if you're sitting there going, right, I'm going to analyse what the bowling performance was, right? And I'm just going to, I'm just going to hone in on their decisions and who, they, who they've actually chosen to bowl. Harpreet Bra has probably been their best bowler in this tournament, right, so far. He's, he's, he's been, he's been very, very, the most very economical. Yeah, yeah. Um, Arshdeep Singh always going to be um, a pain in the ass because he's because of his bowling action. And he's just good at Yorkers. Um, he bowls three overs, Harpreet bowls two overs, and you're kind of sitting there going, lads, <laughs> like, can you utilise your resources just slightly better? Um, Harshal Patel, he, his stock is so high continuously, um, but I'm really not that convinced by Harshal, if I'm perfectly honest, but um, there we are. Um, I thought that with the bat, it was nice to see Johnny Bairstow hit some runs, um, being obviously English and an English fan, it's nice to see um, that happen because I'd forgotten that he's actually quite good at cricket sometimes. Um, and Liam Livingston, who I think went off the field injured, didn't he, when um, it, was, it was bowling, kind of came in and was kind of doing his thing. Um, and how they're using Sam Curran in this lineup um, continues to surprise me, I think it's probably fair to say. Um, he had pretty much won Punjab King kind of one of their other games, right? 
bang a little mm-hmm. bit further up the order. Here, they've hidden him down the order. Um, we're actually, it was, again, not doesn't really make too much sense to me, right? I think Jitter Sharma in that space actually probably better effective in Sam Curran's position rather than actually doing that. And so, again, just their decision-making on that front was a little bit confusing for me. Yeah, so they chose, I think they chose to send Jitesh Sharma in in the 14th over and sent Curran in the 17th over when they've used them basically the other way around in the other two matches. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I understand that the run rate's a bit higher and, and maybe you're thinking Jitesh is a better starter. And Jitesh Sharma is, he is actually one of, if not the best, 10 ball strike rate guys in world cricket. Um, but 14th over is still quite early to send that. Like there will be another wicket and you will have pressure to score runs immediately. So it does. He's also facing bombs. Really counterintuitively. Chichi Sharma has not faced that fast delivery. Like Mayan Gadav in, in the IPL. Well, yeah. but there's a whole new kettle of fish, right, to go and play that. And I think yeah. there might be there's something there, right? Where even if you've got, a, if you start well, you come in and the guy's actually bowling 93, 94, 95 miles an hour. There's a different kettle of fish. Yeah, I mean, we were talking, we've talked a lot about Luck now being quite a boring team and not a team that we want to watch. I think we've give, both given praise to Puran on the batting side. He was obviously excellent again. Um, but there is now a second reason to watch Luck now Super Giants, and, and it is this absolute jet of a guy, Mayank Yadav. Why have they not been playing him? <laughs> where's he where's he coming from nobody really knows i mean like you know obviously indian cricket um i'm being <laughs> not literal there but it is it is like a guy has just walked onto the cricket field and it was bowling gas i mean like it all it really obviously took punjab by surprise they didn't have a tactic for playing him um well shikha darwan's tactic seems to be to play him from square leg <laughs> uh it is it's it's quite fun in the IPL when you get just sort of mad stuff like this happen. Like, oh, the world's fastest bowler who nobody has ever heard of has just turned up and taken three for uh, to, to win a to win a match on debut. Like, you'd, you'd think we'd have seen him once. <laughs> I mean, you saw, you saw the other bowlers before him anyway. You're just like, poor Red's just like, not yet. Just not yet. Oh, <laughs> and now. This is when we need to do it. This is when we strike. Um, and But in the in the previous two games, um, Lucknow, uh, or the previous game that Lucknow had, um, you kind of sit there and go, why was he not in the in the 11? Um, just a little bit surprising um, because he is he's exciting. Um, and there's just a thing about raw pace that just kind of does it. Um, you saw Umran Malik in the last kind of couple of years kind of come onto the scene and be like that. Yadav is in that space now, um, and I think it's exciting times. Apparently, um, Ajit Agarkar um, was trying to get him into the squad um, for the England test matches. So um, there's been a little bit of talk beforehand. Okay, a bit of buzz, then. Yeah, but, um, yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I obviously did some research on him after he was bowling absolute gas, and he did have quite a good domestic year for, uh, well, in, in, in the side Mr. Kali Trophy. Um, but so did sort of everyone and his his bowling speed is listed at like me as medium fast on um <laughs> espn crick info I, I don't i don't think it is now but it was and and generally like having a good smat and being listed as medium fast does not equal a good <laughs> ipl bowler that just equals a guy who's going to bowl some seam like it was really it really was stunning that this guy came in and, and, and bowled that quick i mean I think this, his fastest ball was basically 156 kph, which is what 97 miles an hour. I'd be surprised if there's another quicker ball this tournament, and I, I wouldn't also be surprised if there's if that's like the quickest ball we see all year in world cricket. I mean, like how many guys can actually crank it to that level? You've got Wood, who can get to 97. Um, you've got maybe a really fit Nokia, but he's mm. been bowling sort of in the low nineties and has had some injuries. So I don't think we should take that for granted. Um, we've had like, you know, Umran Malik sounds like a stretch to me on that one. I mean, this guy might literally be the fastest bowler in the world by any Ross. Yeah. And I think it's, it's fantastic to see. I mean, actually it gives luck now more of a chance now. And um, we were kind of sitting there going, this, this team is uninspiring. Um, you've got quite a lot of kind of safe, kind of conservative cricketers 
who they kind of know how to grind out victories. Um, they're built in the guise of kind of, oh, we want people who could do multiple things, kind of a lot of all-rounders in there or wicketkeeper batsmen. They've got kind of three or four to choose from in that space. We want these multi-dimensional cricketers. Um, that was all built from the last mega auction. And, or, or the last auction they, and you just saw there was a bit like, well, hang on a minute. This guy is a bit of a point of difference for them. Um, and actually, mm -hmm. it, it, it goes from luck now being, say, if he, if he can stay fit, um, and it can cause such like such carnage. Let's be fair. When you're bowling that quick, um, it's going to be really, really exciting. It gives luck now a real chance because this is going to be four overs that people are going to be a little bit just like, well, hang on, hang on a minute, because not all of these players are going to be ready for um, what he's got to offer. Yeah, Ross, we've got three fixtures coming up before our next show, which will be on Wednesday, starting with Mumbai Indians v Rajasthan Royals tomorrow. Um, your boys Rajasthan going away <laughs> to Mumbai. Mumbai in de desperate need of a win. What do you think will yeah. happen? Um, so this is some, it's a really difficult one because obviously, yeah, my pink boys are in a they've started well, um, but Mumbai have a bit of a habit of starting slowly and then biting back. Um, we're not sure when Shiokuma Yadav is going to come back. Um, maybe tomorrow will be a step too soon. Um, but I think when he's back, there's a there's a bit of a different outline to that team. Um, but I've got to back my pink boys on this one. Um, I think yeah. you've seen. You've seen kind of Jai Swan Butler um, not really get into it yet, and two games out of two. I'm, I'm not seeing three games out of three on either of those, and Samson's looking pretty decent as well. Um, and I just think that Rajasthan Royals' bowling <coughs> lineup is a, is slightly better than uh, Mumbai's, even with the kind of Jasprit Brumra fact, um, factor. Well, I'll take the easy one there, and I'll go for the home team. Then I think that's a, I think that's about as close to a coin flip as you get. I, I'd still say, even though Mumbai have lost their first two matches, they're on paper the best or second best team in the tournament and Rajasthan are on paper the second or best team in the tournament I don't really buy into form that much I think quality is much more important as a as a factor in who wins a cricket match and so should be a good one it's a shame that's on Monday afternoon although it's a bank holiday in the UK so we why was only one game it. yesterday why, why, why was it like again like literally why don't you stick one of the one of these games on today yesterday and play this game as the Sunday night fixture that that is what you want yeah. from the IPL no um yeah well yeah it is what we want from the ipl but we also want thirty thousand people going ballistic over Dhoni <laughs> as well in a scenario that doesn't make any sense so give me give me the whole ipl package is what i'm saying uh on tuesday we've got rcb v lucknow super giants uh this is at the chinaswami i'll be interested to see how really fast guy goes at the chinaswami um, I don't buy a Gadav, obviously. Like, I, I, I think doing it at the Akana, the Punjab, is different to doing it uh, against Kohli, in theory. Maybe mm -hmm. one of the best players of quick bowling in the world on a tiny on a tiny pitch. That's the battle I'm looking forward to there. I, I'm still going to go for like now Super Giants because I just can't bring myself to back <laughs> RCB. Uh, do you have any thoughts on this game? Um, well, there's more games are being won playing at home, right? There's been a bit of a home advantage, definitely, in the IPL. Yeah, so and which team have fucked that up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, RCB are just in disarray. Their bowling unit is just dreadful. It's absolutely dreadful. Um, and, yeah, they're, they're going to need to do something around their team makeup, I think, to actually give them a little bit more of a chance. But they've just forced themselves into a corner. Um, and Andy Flowers got some uh, work to do um, at the racing car beds. Um, and yeah, I'm, it's, it's not a game I'm going to rush back to watch if I'm perfectly honest, Jack. Like, it's, that's going to be one of those ones I'm a bit like, yeah, it's on, but I'm not too fussed about it. All right, fair enough. I, I think that'd be good. I mean, I think any game at the Chinaswami is pretty good fun. Yeah, good atmosphere there. You obviously get the Kohli factor and you get generally. 350 to 450 runs which is which is good so I, i'll be watching that i'll take one for the team if you're if you're desperate to avoid it <laughs> uh on wednesday final game before we do our show uh delhi capitals v the Kolkata knight riders uh kkr actually look like a good cricket team I, I think we have to acknowledge that at this point um delhi trending upwards though could this be could this be could delhi go to two and two I, I don't see that happening. I see KKR um, kind of getting the better of them here. I, I think they're 
uh, Delhi's bowling unit overperformed today, um, and I think they'll kind of revert back to the mean um, by Wednesday, unfortunately. And this KKR lineup is just super exciting. I want them to win every single game at the moment. They are brilliant to watch, um, and they've got a real game plan. And, um, Guatem Gambia going back there um, has proven to be a nice little, uh, nice little tidbit for them. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm back in KKR on that one. I'll probably go with KKR as well, to be honest. I think they're they're a better team, aren't they? I think so. Really? Yeah. Yeah. The, anyway, the, 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 the only issue is going to be is if if Dave Warner and Pant can kind of negate the spin bowling aspect to it. That that's yeah. kind of the, the area to it. I think that's going to be a key battle. But um, if Stark can get a wicket or two up front early on, um, and he's not taken one yet. The um, two million person, well, how much money you end up earning from this kind of eight weeks worth of work? Um, he's gone round the park, so um, hopefully he turns up. Yeah, uh, it would be good to see him get a wicket, wouldn't it? It's kind of fun. It's kind of funny him getting spanked, but like you know, one wicket, Mitchell. That's all. Yorker, we're asking. Yorker to Dave Warner. There you go. Because it'll be kind of funny when it happens, won't it? Like I hope it happens in his fourth over and it's kind of an irrelevant wicket. It gets like the number nine or something like that. <laughs> then does a huge celebration, maybe a send off. Um, anyway, yeah, look, that's it. That's it. One for sixty two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it for the cricket podcast. Um, we will be back on Wednesday. Make sure you click like and subscribe. Make sure you follow us on social media at the cricket pod. And if you really like the pod, or if you don't, and you just want to give us money. Maybe you're rich. Uh, patreon.com forward slash the cricket pod to support us directly. Goodbye. Thanks for watching.